Hi, I'm Corey, and I have too many tapes. I watch a lot of crap for this show, to put it mildly. I sift through so much crass, craven, and downright cynical kids programming that I sometimes lose sight of why I started this in the first place. It's almost like archaeology. I go digging through the past to unearth forgotten fragments of our VHS past, and most of the time I end up with the stuff on the top layer, the glut of cheaply produced muck that was made on the basis that kids will watch absolutely anything, and if we get any distribution, we'll all make a buck. But sometimes, and this is extremely rare, mind you, sometimes you get a show where everything was firing on all cylinders. The writing, great. The puppets, fine. The performances, good. And it's educational, too, and based in actual, accurate-to-the-80s science. And it's not trying to push a weird, regressive agenda on kids. And somehow this beautiful jewel was lost to time. The only way I even knew to look for it was a brief clip of its intro on an Everything is Terrible video. So I did some digging, and I have unearthed a copy of what may be the sleeper hit of 1980s kids' science shows, chock full of goofy, Muppet-style humor, a delightfully light and sophisticated tone, cool integration of live-action elements, puppets, and people, and a story that, by Jove, it actually works! This time on Too Many Tapes, I give you 1987's The Adventures of Commander Crumb Cake. This is the first High Tops video I've ever reviewed for this channel, and I gotta say, that logo rules. It's iconic. Maybe it's the nostalgia talking, but it just brings me back to my living room in the early 90s watching a Charlie Brown Christmas on VHS. Great piece of graphic and motion design. And right off the bat, this theme song slaps. Do we still say slaps? Has that gotten to the point where it's funny ironic, dated ironic, or just out of touch? Anyway, the song. It's fun. The opening sequence is chaotic, frenetic, and very late 80s. Crumb cakes are hero! The hero of the show! Crumb cakes are hero! You better watch out! Creeps on the make! Trying to get more crumb cakes! Crumb cakes are hero! Also, this thing was produced by Homestar Communications Incorporated, and it bums me out that it isn't, you know, that Homestar. Any show would be benefited from the addition of the cheat. This episode is called They Shoot Dinosaurs, Don't They? Which is a pretty wild pull for a kid show from the 80s, but I'll allow it. Our villains here, and it's obvious they're our villains because they live in a castle at the top of a hill with lightning and organ music, Natch, are Dr. Disgusto and Leech. <laughs> now, now, Leech, there's no reason to be concerned. Have I ever hurt you before? <laughs> Gentlemen, behold, more corn! This segment is filled with a boatload of patter. Maybe this scene is a bit too long, the patter and mumbling feel like time-filling and vamping, but the dialogue here is genuinely quite fun. Now that I think of it, with Disgusto's very specific and enunciated dialogue and Leech's odd, displeased mumbling, it's more like a Mirror Universe Dr. Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker. Just think of it, you little hermunculus. You and I will be handsome, rich, famous. We'll be jet setters, you and I. Oh, yeah. Just imagine us on the Riviera, the Rio. Oh, what do you mean if I'm not successful? No. Dr. Disgusto is always successful. Disgusto is working on some kind of device that harnesses lightning to make people look better. This, like any Muppet Labs type segment, goes horribly wrong and just ends up engulfing Leech in a puff of smoke. They wander off, but leave the power to the device running. From here, we meet Commander Crumbcake, a feisty dog puppet who, well, this is actually a pretty good puppet. The human puppets later on, eh, B minus, but Crumbcake is A OK. Crumbcake explains the consequences of Disgusto not turning off the power, and there's something about the postmodern lamp shading here that works better than the attempts in something like the Mr. Potato Head show. If anything, Commander Crumbcake is Mr. Potato Head's good and way less obnoxious twin. Every bit of inside baseball Hollywood whining is actually spun into a Muppet quality gag. There's more vaudeville to it. That's right, the same old time-space continuum that science fiction writers dust off to explain unlikely time travel stories. Speaking of Muppets, Commander Crumbcake sounds a heck of a lot like Frank Oz's Fozzie Bear, and maybe that's because performer Tom Vandenberg was in the Muppet orbit for a while, working on Fraggle Rock and Follow That Bird. Before we get into the story itself, though, we have a segment called Ed Breaks, which is literally a break for education, starring a sleazy but gullible salesman character called, you guessed it, Ed Breaks. Delightful. The show is delightful. 
We're learning about the origin and the fate of the dinosaurs here, which is pretty exciting. What's even more exciting is this seems to have been made before the wide consensus acceptance of the asteroid impact theory of the death of the dinosaurs, so we get another theory thrown in for good measure. By the end of the Cretaceous period, flowering plants came into existence. One theory is that this change in the foliage caused digestion problems for the plant-eating dinosaurs. Well, another theory is that there was a change in the climate. Scientists today believe that change was caused by an extraterrestrial event. Extraterrestrial? So you, you mean like space monsters? Well, no, no, not exactly. An event like, well, like a meteor or asteroid that hit the Earth and covered it in a large cloud of dust, which changed the living conditions. Well, eventually killing plants and living creatures like the dinosaurs. You know, something that big, I'm really surprised I didn't read about it in the newspapers. Oh, Ed, we're talking millions and millions and millions of years ago. Oh, well, that explains it then. I've only been getting the papers since last summer. Well, how about this stinking egg? These jokes are like B-tier Muppet grade, but that's just so much more than what a lot of these Slapdash productions were giving back then. But what genuinely astounds me here is that the education is going down so smoothly. There's a joy to all of this, like people believed in what they were making. Anyway, back to the main plot. The kids are complaining about monsters coming through a time-space continuum as an overplayed bit. It's both lampshading and a grim omen for literally every single Marvel movie of the past 10 years. They're oblivious to the dinosaurs wandering behind them, which is a nice bow on top of the lampshading. It seems here like they're compositing the puppets onto miniature footage of a town street, it's unique style, it works well, and I imagine it kept the costs down pretty significantly. And these dinosaur puppets are absolutely adorable and feel akin to the Ray Harryhausen school of model making. And now we've got a song, an original song. It's basic, but it's a catchy way to show off the tiny little rampage happening on our miniature streets. Dinosaur, would you like to have some breakfast? Now we've got our other weird fourth wall breaking character, a local news puppet. The Cognito police force is helpless. Police chief Steve Beasley is on the record as saying, ah! Corny, terrible, I love it. This is amazing. The biggest thing I can fault this show on though is the integration of songs. The songs aren't all that compelling, even if they're quite informative. Dr. Mindboggler is singing a song about being a paleontologist, but it's dense and a bit confusing for the audience it's being aimed at, which was six to ten year olds, namely. I spent my time in the dirt and the grime with a shovel or pick in my fist. I can screw nice stone for a fossil or bone. I'm a paleontologist. Again, extraordinarily basic, but at least they're delivering the scientific concepts pretty succinctly. I feel like this song was almost mandatory? Like they were committed to having at least one sing-along in the episode because it's good for kids' development or something. Anyway, we learn that both of the dinosaurs are herbivores, which is nice, and we set up the conflict. The army is coming in with tanks to blow up the dinosaurs, which is both a good way to set up the stakes and also make some great 50s-style sci-fi commentary about how bloodthirsty and shoot-first we are as a society. Well, you just hang around then. The troops are scheduled to arrive by this evening. They'll blast those overgrown salamanders back where they belong. Yahoo! Let's do it, guys! No, 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 no! No, I, I can't it. let that happen! I've got to find a way to save them! And from the sound of the... Ominous music, 4, I don't Bronco have much Burgers. time. I'm a sucker for fourth wall breaking in kids' shows. Teach kids early that formalism is useless. The medium can be whatever you want it to be. Go hog wild, be playful. It may be the most important lesson in this tape, and I'm only slightly exaggerating. Hey though, remember Crumb Cake? The dog? The titular dog? The dog who's on the cover? He has a very tangential relationship to the story. It's like he's trying his best to avoid the plot at all costs. You're coming by to pick us up? I'm busy. Uh, uh, help save the dinosaurs? Uh, I've got an important meeting, actually. Dangerous? Uh, a, a very important meeting. Giant bones? When do we leave? Again, corny, stupid, and genuinely quite funny. There's something about a writer that knows how to build a punchline, even a basic one. You can just feel the difference in the rhythms. A lot of things have the feeling of comedy without actually having jokes. This may be a glass house stone throwing moment for me, but it's true. You can always tell. They speed off to the dig site to find any clues on how to deal with the dinosaurs before the army spends hundreds of thousands of dollars turning them into little dino chunks. And wait a minute, there's a 
tiny car with puppets against a blue screen with driving footage behind them? This is just proto Potato Head with less horrifying character design. As Disgusto and Leech look down on the chaos, we get some smoothly integrated and subtly funny information about scientific discoveries that were made by accident. Did you know that some of the most famous scientific discoveries were made by accident? Like the light whitey. Oh, yes. X-rays, penicillin, minoxidil. But never mind that for now. The important thing is the dinosaurs came through the time warp that we created all. Dr. Disgusto is somewhere between Ron Mayle of Sparks and John Waters in his demeanor. Both uh, famous children's entertainers. If the dinosaurs don't get home in two hours, they're trapped forever. Boom, escalating stakes. We're caught in a pincer between the army ticking clock and the time tunnel ticking clock. By God, this thing has structure! Back to Crumb Cake, and we're at a dinosaur dig site to try to find clues. Crumb Cake finds an enormous bone, and the kids razz him for being lazy. And great. More science education about the particulars of paleontology and how paleontologists determine the age of dinosaur bones. If you were a six-year-old in the 90s going through a severe dinosaur phase, this tape would have been like catnip to you. And then we cut to some army b-roll. Yay, b-roll. When used properly, b-roll is delightful, and I feel like this was part of the first postmodern wave of throwing b-roll into things as to obviously make it look like b-roll is a bit, and that's rad. A plus, great b-roll. I really love the style of the interstitial titles in this thing too. Very 90s trapper keeper. I'm effusive today, what can I say? The good guys find a giant fossilized egg and race back into town for some reason. For a show that's been pretty good at setting and raising stakes, this is probably the squishiest part so far. Luckily, it's papered over by more 90s lampshading Muppet humor. Hold on, um, I'll, I'll turn on the radio. Maybe there'll be a special news bulletin. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. Hey, isn't that the same jerk who interviewed you yesterday? This is Eric Generic, the same jerk that interviewed that loony scientist on TV yesterday. So the big plan is get the dinosaurs to follow the big egg because they might recognize it. Not very uh, inspiring as plans go. Also, it's fossilized. Yeah, you're basically taunting a giant lizard with a big rock. Not to play script doctor to a kid's TV show that's older than I am, but these dinosaurs are both herbivores in a concrete jungle urban center. Find your leafiest tree, dig it up, and put it in the back of a U-Haul van. Drive it around and lead them through the time tunnel. Bam, dinosaurs saved before the army even arrives. Crumb Cake rushes into action and lures the dinosaurs away from the army in a way that's not shown on screen because it would cost way too much money to composite. The day is saved. Yay! We get some more news segments and establish Crumb Cake's personality a bit more. He's a credit hog and a bit of a braggart, and it's fun to have the back and forth with the folks at home talking to the TV and the folks on the TV responding like, what is happening here? Well, I did have a little help from my friends, uh, Aggie and Banjo and old Doc Mindbuckler. A, a little, little help. help! Okay, okay. So I had a teeny bit more than a little help. Mindbuggler? Uh, you mean that dime store expert? I'm a dinosaur expert, you pea brain! Huh? Uh, say, hey, hey, who am I interviewing here anyway, huh? Well, I yeah, think you ought to interview thing, all eh? three of us. Well, we got all three of us that did it. Whiz. Wasn't uh, that uh, silly uh, dog? Uh, he doesn't forget, do anything by himself. Who was us? Who was me? Who was the doctor? Who was, 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 was my friends and kids here? Hey, we're out there shoving the whole world. We fade out into the second episode on this tape, which is titled Tiptoe Through the Time Warp. We've moved from psychological dramas to Tiny Tim about a decade before Spongebob would even try. Here we reinforce that Crumb Cake is so, so full of himself. He's a bum, but a charismatic bum. And he's used his heroics during the space-time continuum dinosaur event as a way to score free meals from people. We get a recap of the previous episode, and then it's off to Dr. Disgusto's castle, where he and Leech are in a big-time funk. Crumb Cake keeps saving the day and ruining their evil schemes, and they're wondering if it's even worth trying anymore. Like all of us these days, Disgusto has to quickly shove down the depression and hopelessness in his gut somewhere so he can take a video call with his boss. The boss berates him and then threatens him with the worst punishment of all, revocation of his membership to Creep, the council of really evil, evil people. That's right. No more issues of Maggot Monthly. No more discounts on torture devices and annoying party tricks. And worst of all, I'll get you with both my bare hands. 
Oh, Oi, Bailey, what are we gonna do? They debate building a time machine, and Disgusto takes part in my favorite comic villain trope, berating his henchman's idea, and then turning right back around and coming up with the exact same thing. Baby dinosaurs? Bring back tiny little baby dinosaurs and sell them as pets so that when they grow up, they hey. can destroy the town? Uh -huh. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard! I love that now town. keep quiet while I think! All right. I've got it! We'll go back in time. And I'll bring back tiny little baby dinosaurs and sell them as pets so that when they grow up, they can destroy the town. Ah, I do love that oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> they decide on grabbing some baby T-Rexes and Disgusto chickens out of doing the actual time travel himself. Gee, Willikers, Leech, I just remembered. I've been taking this medication for my nosebleeds. Oh, yeah. And my doctor specifically warned me about time travel of any kind. Ah, thank you, I know I'm pulling a lot of clips in this one, but it's hard not to, you know? The energy is solid. Maybe it's just been so long since I've had a good time with one of these that I'm overreacting a bit. Like, this is legitimately the best tape I've reviewed since, what, Bone Chillers? They both have pretty similar comic energies now that I mention it. Go watch Bone Chillers, by the way. Bone Chillers rules. Our intrepid heroes find out about Dr. Disgusto's plans because, well, in the 80s, you could pretty reliably advertise things in the newspaper if you wanted them to make money. Marketing was simpler back then. The whole thing's a scam now. Digital ads don't do anything. Billions of dollars and none of it works. The analytics are all fake. This isn't related to Commander Crumb Cake at all, but you should look into it. The whole thing is wild. Anyway, I was really hoping the ad was going to be more along the lines of, wanted, somebody to go back in time with me. This is not a joke. You'll get paid after we get back. Must bring your own weapons. Safety not guaranteed. I have only done this once before. But alas, the evil duo accidentally both go back to the past, and Crumbcake also manages to send himself back 100 million years to the Cretaceous period as well. At the very moment Disgusto comes to accept his prehistoric fate, my favorite puppet-related thing happens. There's one good thing about all this. Hi. At least we won't be bothered by that horrible dog, Crumbcake. Ah! Anytime you ragdoll a puppet, I am a happy guy. So simple and so silly. This episode is a lot lighter on the educational content. Here we have more of a straightforward prehistoric time travel adventure. Crumb Cake and Team Disgusto continue to break the fourth wall and run away from Tyrannosauruses. Oh, oh relax! I'll take care of any dinosaurs that happen to be wandering about. Come on! Don't you guys watch the news? Didn't you see what I did to those two dinosaurs in last week's episode? Huh? Sheesh, no problem. While Crumb Cake comes to the realization that there's no pizza or onion rings in the Cretaceous era, and he'll have to turn himself into a little lad who loves berries and leaves. Berries and leaves! And the occasional rodent, I guess. The useless puppet children investigate Disgusto's lab and drop a little bit of prehistoric era lesson reinforcement, and Crumb Cake stumbles across a Triceratops. As the unlikely trio starts to realize their fate and that they'll never get home, the kids on the other side of the 100 million years luck into smacking the return button on that time porta potty. The trio thinks they're dead, and it makes for a good bit, even if they play it out a bit too much. Everything's back to normal, day is saved, hip hip hooray. Later that week, of course, Crumb Cake greatly, greatly exaggerates his actions while he was back in time, and they get a video call from the much nicer good guy boss. Creep really needs to work on their toxic work environment. Or maybe that's one of the benefits, I don't know. Mom, as she is known, can't remember Crumb Cake's name and calls him things like crab meat and clam bake, which is delightful. Keep up the good work, Kong Cobb. I'm not owned, he insists. I'm not owned! We end as all good shows must, with our villains on the run performing a nightclub vaudeville act in Iceland. And that's it for this one. It's a shame this show has been so thoroughly scrubbed from the collective unconsciousness because I truly feel like it had some genuine value. It did a good job at presenting the educational lessons while keeping the tone upbeat and the characters funny. It also didn't skimp on telling a coherent story, even if that story was a little on the basic side. It's always a shame when the story is an afterthought in shows like these. It's the backbone on which literally everything else rests. So cheers to David Burke, wherever and honestly, whoever you are. You did a good job, made a good show. Hopefully more people will rediscover it. Thank you all for watching Too Many Tapes. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell icon to get updates for when I upload videos. If you feel like watching this VHS in full, check it out on my second channel. 
Do you know anything about the production or making of Commander Crumb Cake? Were you involved directly? I'd love to hear from you. Sound off in the comments and maybe I'll do a follow-up with primary sources and whatnot. If you want to help out a small YouTube creator, consider donating a dollar or more a month to my Patreon. Everything I make for Patreon goes towards either making the videos look as good as they can, or towards tracking down new and rare tapes for the channel. Commander Crumb Cake in particular was not an easy or cheap find, so I genuinely appreciate your continued support. If you donate 20 or more dollars a month, you're a little lad or lass who loves berries and leaves, and you get to have your name in the credits in an enormous font like NATO Kitsch. You can also be like Mippa and have your name in an enormous font too. For $10 or more a month, you're an adorable dinosaur puppet, and your name gets to be pretty big in the credits too. And for $5 a month, you're a nightclub act in Blubber Bay, Iceland, because it only makes sense to end on you. And you get early access to my videos. Thank you all again for watching, and I'll see you next time on Too Many Tapes. Wait to do do bar deep deep bar. Zip up 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 up. Zip up 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 up. I'm the crumb cake. Dibba 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 dib